What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Collectible Conversations. Uh, I'm your host, Pokemon Radar, and here to my right is our other lovely host, Squeaks. How you doing, Squeaks? Doing well, Radar. How you doing? You're back. <sighs> 18. Also, this is 18. This is 18. This we didn't say a number, but it's 18. 18. 18. I remembered. 18. We yep. just we just turned 18. We got, we can do a lot of cool things now. No. Okay. Not yet. No. Nope. 21. No, anyways, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll wait till we're 21. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm back in the cold tundra of Michigan. It's, uh, there's a lot of snow. I, I, I missed the, the, the storm apparently, but it was, was there snow before you left at all. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, but like okay. right now, I don't remember when it happened, but yeah, it happened earlier this week. So there was still standing snow, but yeah, it's like piles now. Like the car that I park to normally, they don't really move their car, my neighbors, and they like you can't get it out. It's snowed in. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the boat I'm in right now. I have to wait, take packages till my wife gets home because my car like cannot go through the snows <laughs> at all. <laughs> so you should have bought the Model X, man. <laughs> I don't think that goes through the snow either. No, like, probably not. Uh, no, we need the cyber truck. The cyber Dang. truck. One day. Elon Musk. Make <laughs> One <it happen>. day. <laughs> but uh yeah, dude. Back in, in Michigan. Happy to be home, but also not happy to be in the cold. So um Well, so your trip was extended a little bit because you were originally supposed to be back Monday. Yeah, I was supposed to be back Monday and uh they we just weren't prepared for the vast quantity of what this collection was. Um I don't think they had any idea and they didn't on what the process was for grading and preparing all of that. So, um, you know, I literally had to go through binders, which thankfully they were in order, all the cards, but I had to go through binders of stuff, sleeve it up, put it in card savers, log the entire PSA submission, like all the sets from base set first edition through Sky Ridge box toppers. We didn't even get the tops chrome. We didn't even get to the promos, all the other cool stuff. Um, but yeah, it was a very arduous, long process, especially with us tying in content around it. Um, we had some content creators come out and get some footage of the stuff. and That was pretty cool. Got to meet um, Super Duper Danny, Alex Hodges, who that was kind of a funny full circle. He's the TikTok guy that I interviewed yeah. last week. Like literally... He, he filled in a spot for Lootbox TV. He, so Lootbox Juice and Andrew introduced me to him. And he was a big fan of me and you. And like, he was like super excited to be on the podcast. And then like two days later, he's on the podcast. And then two days later, I meet him <laughs> like in person. In person, yeah, so which that, is cool. That was kind of a cool little, quick little circle of, of uh, building a relationship there. So that was nice. But uh, Well, and he's really nice. He actually, he reached out to me on Instagram and he's, he's a really nice guy. Like I like him a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. He talked you up quite a bit. I hope uh, motivating you to, to get on TikTok a little bit more. I put my first one up. You did? I did. I, I need to follow I did. you. It's, it's not the best. It was just kind of like a trial to see, but it got like 200 views and I have no followers on TikTok. Nice. So, I mean, I was kind of impressed with that. Um, I need to... I think I just need to film them from my phone instead of like filming them in the orientation and then putting them through Canva and then putting that on uh, my phone and uploading it. I think I just need to take my phone. It's like 50 seconds and just yeah. say what I've got to say right then and there, you know? Um, yeah. But I think I'm going to do like the, like the market in 50 seconds or something like that kind of concept. Like mm -hmm. I like that idea of just like giving like a quick update and maybe that update like kind of, goes with whatever video i post that day that way then if people want to hear more they can like you know to kind of encourage like platform growth on both sides um but i think that's kind of where i'm going to start and then i've got some other ideas you know we've talked about different things but yeah. um but yeah he kind of gave me that push of like you need to do that like yeah get started the, like, like less excuses even if some of them fail and like you don't start well like just yeah. start putting something up yeah because tiktok is still in this place of he words it like organic growth, organic, um, yeah, organic growth. So mm -hmm. although TikTok's not the place for people to really like make money, it's a great place to get a lot of viewership organically oh, and, tra sure. and transfer that over to YouTube mm -hmm. where your main yeah. content is. So yeah, 50, 50 second snippets of the market talk like you 
do in your extended 15 minute videos would be perfect. Yeah, I mean, I've seen Purple Cliff and Pink Vapor Gaming from Twitch where they would average like 7,500 viewers max. You know, she hadn't even, um, Pink Vapor hadn't even gotten partner. And now she's gotten partner on Twitch. He's blown up to like 1,800 viewers average at a time. He just broke 100,000 subscribers on YouTube because of his TikTok following. Um, like has now started to come over. Like he started making content there. She has it makes like anime content there, which is like what blew her up on Twitch. I mean, I think she's approaching a million followers now. Oh, wow. And, you know, like crazy numbers. And, you know, her story's funny because she started out like that, like was like her private anime TikTok where she just like posted her thoughts about anime and people like started to pick up on it and it just like took off. And, you know, before she made like a lot of Pokemon related content. And so I, I think it's just like interesting, like the organic, like kind of like what you said with him, like the organic growth of it. Right. Like I have no followers on TikTok. I didn't tell anyone I posted this video. I didn't do anything. I got 200 views. What other platform can you have absolutely no following, no exposure, no marketing and get any views on a post that you make? I mean, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And and so my you know, my wheels start spinning. What if I really start? catering content to this taking time and focusing it marketing it etc and you know it it is wild like how how people can find your stuff right like somebody hashtag squeak squad which means either they saw it and went to youtube or they found it from like youtube over and like that kind of thing to me so it is something i i need to do more research on so it's cool that you you know leading it back that you got to meet him though in person and hang out and make some content and stuff i think that's really cool i'm envious because he seems like a really fun guy to hang out with so yeah yeah it was a good time but uh yeah i mean that that whole whole uh i guess shabacle will be quite exciting once things come back from psa and and we see that event kind of take place um mm -hmm. but while i was there we ran out of, of card savers, card sleeves <laughs> at one point. So we started hitting up the local shops to, to get some penny sleeves. And um, we stumbled upon a sports store, a sports card store. And they were kind of in the process of, of wanting to sell their shop. Um, it wasn't like a full on, we're dumping everything, you can buy it all, here it is. But they were in, you know, they were hitting that age where they, wanted to relieve the responsibility off their shoulders, help someone pick up the shop, teach them their ways, get them set up with distributors and whoever other connections they have um, to take the store and have it live on. And they were very sentimental about it. Um, but, I, you know, still everything was for sale. And I bought a bunch of vintage magic from them. Vintage, like okay. I got Odyssey and legions and apocalypse and judgment that was kind of the block that i played as a kid in like early 2000 and you know of course I gotta ask well do you have any pokemon and mm -hmm. he says well yeah i've got all the complete sets in mint condition and I'm like oh are they for sale and lo and behold yeah uh but we just have to set up a time for you to come visit and take a look at it because i don't keep it in the store obviously um, he said he had every Watsy set in first edition and on, um, which obviously you get very excited about. I mean, the amount of times, especially these days, that you see or hear about a complete set like this is very, very slim. Yeah. So, and especially coming from a card sto store owner who has been in the business for so long, I have no reason to doubt that it is mint and probably pack fresh pack pulled, they, right? or at least understands what near mint is you know exactly like. exactly so i was very excited um and i had to push back my flight again in order to meet with this guy the next day um and he brought it out showed me the collection um started telling me these offers he was receiving and all that stuff which sure you know yeah, exactly. Like, it means nothing to me. Sure, they could have been legit. I don't know. But again, without seeing these collections, I don't take anyone's word for it, like, no matter what, yeah. you know. Um, and so, show me the collection right into the first binder. He's got two packs from each set that he saved for some reason. Uh, he didn't save the art sets. He just saved two packs from each set, which I actually bought. Okay. Well, we'll get there. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, we bought something. We, we oh, bought woo! something. We bought something. But yeah, we flip, okay. flip, flip it through the binders, looking at the first edition base set to start, obviously. And his price point was, he, he was at $100,000 for this set, for the base set first edition. Which pretty much a nine set already graded. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, of course, there's an opportunity there still if the cards truly are mint. But uh, at that price point, the only thing that mattered was the Charizard. So I went straight to the Charizard. Uh, I could see in the binder it was off center. So no matter how mint it was, it would have been a nine. And then as I took it out, there was a couple nicks here and there just from probably being pulled out of the pack, put in this binder, taken out so many times to be looked at. And it, it was it was a a, a solid eight like not a doubt in my mind it would get an eight um and that was kind of similar all the way throughout that set so i didn't even make him an offer on the set uh because of where he was at he did ask me like what i thought it was worth and i told him you know maybe 40k as it sits which uh, you know you get it graded and get an eight set and you might be able to get what 50 60 000. so um i you know, i thought that was very fair and looking at everything else uh, he actually only had up to Neo Revelation for some reason. I'm guessing he either yeah. misplaced some binders or, or just hard stopped that Neo Revelation and didn't realize that. Which Watch set continue. is Neo in of the four? Three. It's three. Yeah. Is Destiny four? Yeah. So he didn't even have Destiny. Not, so he doesn't yeah. have Destiny, he doesn't have Sky Ridge, doesn't have Legendary Collection, doesn't have Expedition, no Aquapolis. Okay. Right. I, he, he told me that he had all the WotC stuff, and I asked him about e-reader sets beforehand, and he said, oh, no, no, that was Nintendo. And I said, no, it was WotC. I explained it to him, and he was like, then I, then I have it. Like He was very adamant that he had every WotC set because he's a collector. So I'm guessing he misplaced the binder, at least with the Neo Destiny set. Um, that he doesn't know where it's at, but the yeah, that one to miss place. Yeah, but <laughs> the legendary and other and e-reader sets, I kind of doubt he has, especially would have it in in reverse hollows as well. But um, he yeah. was asking a lot for that too. I I told him like, oh, you're missing these sets. If he was asking 100k for everything else, and I so talked 200k for everything, 200k for everything, and and I talked I, I talked to you about it, and you're like, yeah, there's mm-hmm. if he has all the reverse hollows, those and complete sets. There could be a hundred K there. And but without those big sets, all the reverse hollows and even the Neo Destiny, it just wasn't even close. And he had to reevaluate basically, because I told him like, yeah, it's not worth that. You know, the, if you get it graded and get a bunch of tens, maybe. But um Yeah. The way but that now it you're sits. you know, you're banking on that, which is it, it's you just know, not, and the money and time and yeah, it's a whole nother ball. Yeah, it's just not a risk uh, I was willing to take. So I ended up offering him on the packs because uh, he told me, and I believed him, that he would just open boxes until he completed the sets, and then he would take packs and put them in his sleeves, right? Which, sure, he probably pulled the Charizard from the box that he took the packs from, but that doesn't mean there couldn't still be a heavy pack. So I, I took the risk. I bought his two first edition base set packs, a Charizard Art and a Venusaur Art, for 6000 each which was you know that's is a steal yeah what? yeah uh, well, i mean it's market what do you mean took the risk there's no risk there at all <laughs> for for light packs i mean they're there's six to eight k right now maybe 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 eight k i don't think there's much risk you can just grade them and get more like the yeah. reality is I they're mean, nice we're looking, too. we just saw a box sell for four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Not including obviously the Logan Paul break because it's right. tough to break down advertisement versus whatever. I, I, <laughs> I, I think you're fine. I think that's insanity. What? Yeah, they're pretty nice. So, um, wow, look at that sandbag, everyone. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, pretty look, big risk. Six thousand for first <laughs> impact. If you didn't, yeah. if you don't know, I mean, it's right now they're still like that price, but they're creeping up, and they probably will continue to creep up uh, due to the few events happening here soon so um but again it's a risk we don't know if it'll do you i know do you go. plan to like weigh them then since you don't really know so you can just oh, definitively I, sell them as heavier light i weighed them the second i got i got back home uh <laughs> oh well what are they are you gonna tell they're both light packs so um i i still believe so that he, yeah i think i'm just gonna grade it well no actually i had this conversation 
with uh, I was in Clubhouse with some people, and I just figured I'd throw that question out to see how people would respond to it because that, that's a tough decision to grade packs. I don't know how long it takes right now to grade packs. I think it's at what minimum six months, probably longer than cards, right? So maybe a year still. Say probably longer now that they made the new case and more people want to use it. Right, because I see that as being a huge opportunity right now. I think the whole graded pack market is going to change because of that slight little change within the cases. Um, I think it's going to do fair very well for, for Watsy packs. Um, and I guess other, other packs above that as well, or later. Um, but there's an opportunity here to within a month or so for this Logan Paul break for these packs to potentially... I don't know, two X for my, yeah. I, so, and you may just want to sell them then exactly. versus, versus risk having right. them tied up. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait, uh, for that event to happen for the market to absorb whatever information they want to absorb from that and make the decision then. Um, cause yeah, I do think getting the packs graded is a, a safe route to take. And, and I do see a bright future for packs now because of that change um in the case but i don't think it's worth missing that peak price potential um yeah with within the next month or so um, you could wait at least to see how that plays out and then always grade them after exactly but there's no pulling them back once you've sent them exactly so. exactly well at least you got something out did you even make an offer on the the card collection at all or was it just kind of you and the guy weren't in the same ballpark and yeah i mean i told them you know, this is what I think it's worth the way it sits. Um, I, I, I guess I guess it was an offer, but he really wasn't interested because of the price point he had in his head. And uh, he, he said he was offered 80,000 cash for the first edition base set. And I was like, you should call that guy back and take it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he's one of those guys. Uh, you know, I don't know how much you've dealt with old store owners, but there's a lot of them that just have zero interest in grading cards. Um, they, yeah. They, they are collectors at heart as well, and they just like their cards the way that they are in binders, which I appreciate greatly as well. But um, And they're always throughout their lifespan of they need cards to constantly sell. So they never, even when grading took 30 days, they never wanted to tie up inventory. Yeah, well, and it's also just like a circumstance where there's a learning curve to it. So it's another thing they have to learn. And like from what you said with this guy specifically, it kind of sounds like he's ready to cash out and move on. So like go learn a whole new skill set and everything just to cash out. Probably it, even though the money like could be justified in doing that, maybe just doesn't see the value or doesn't understand the the gap in difference of value. And so would rather just sell it, move on. And Right, right. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I think he... uh definitely missed out on that opportunity. I mean, even as a collector like that, if he had graded way back in the day and just held on to it, obviously it'd be yeah. such a much better place with that stuff, but Oh, well, at least like leave your name and number and be like, well, if you ever change your mind, need to move it, give me a call. Oh yeah, definitely did that. Um, yeah. They've already called me I about some other, other weird stuff that they found. Cause I, you know, they, they had, I bought a Neopets box from them, you know, this magic stuff. I bought some sports. Did they have any Naruto? I asked, that was the second question after Pokemon was Naruto and DBZ. Uh, they did not, unfortunately, have either. But uh, I think they had some MLB showdown. They just couldn't find it. So I'm waiting for a call on that, which is more Wizards. That's Wizards of the Coast sports. Um, it's a set that I played as a kid. I really love it. I think there's okay. a couple. I didn't. I did not. I thought this was just like one more of those like Harry Potter, like, oh, it's made by Watsy, so we better buy it. Like, I'm not. I don't buy into that. But if you played it, that's cool. Yeah, I played it and with my brothers as well. And, and there's actually, I've been asked a few times in my comments to show my MLB showdown collection. There's, there's a few. I didn't know you had one. Yeah, <laughs> I've got like the full 2000, 2001 set. And I've got the boxes. They're somewhere. They're somewhere in that, in that Dang. case. Dang. Well, yeah, you should show yeah, them. There's first edition stamps. There's all that stuff. It's cool. We need radar show and tell weekly. One <laughs> uh, Weekly. I'll run out real quick. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I, I do want to start opening some stuff. I've got, I've got this as well. Top 75th okay. anniversary. Um, they're just like buybacks, basically, of all different types of sets. So tops it, bought cards from people? 
Um, I don't know how those buybacks work. I just feel like they dig in the trash of the, the like their warehouses and just pull out whatever cards were left over and then stamp it. Uh, I have no idea how they do those types they're, of sets. They're stamped differently. Yeah, they're the same. Like, uh, I know they have, like, for Pokemon, they have, like, the first the Mewtwo Strikes Back movie and I think some, like, random TV animation cards um, with a 75th anniversary stamped on them. But there's in ET these on... these are in a different box? In these boxes, because, yeah, there's... Oh, it says right here, over 100 classic pop culture cards celebrating the top 75th anniversary. You got Star Trek, you got E.T., you got Indiana Jones, you got this JFK on here. But you're guaranteed three celebrity autographs and one authentic buyback card per box. Are we cracking this? Is that? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'll probably end up opening them all, chasing some, some sort of Pokemon card. But uh, That'd be crazy. Could you imagine if you got, like, armored Mewtwo? That would be nuts. Well, my favorite card from that set, I don't know how well you know it, but there's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's Mew just like in the background flying through the sky. And it's like super tiny. There's not much to really look at, but for whatever reason, I really like that card. So that's what oh, I think I do. Is it near the end of the movie with the rainbow or is it the start of the movie Mew? I think it's just, there's like a point where like Mewtwo flies away and then Mew flies through and there's like the rainbow and the clouds are opening up because like things got better, you know? Yeah, Spoilers. it's that one. It's that one. Spoilers. Okay. Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a <laughs> 20 years <laughs> later. <laughs> They've only remade the movie like twice, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Are, aren't they? Wait, are, they're making another movie, right? Like the jungle movie? I, I mean, they, yeah, yeah. They make a movie like every year. I think that one might have just come out in Japan. The Coco movie or whatever. Yeah. Because they did like all the product releases for it. If it's not out already, it's coming out very soon. I don't know when we're going to get like the English adaptation of that. But... Okay. And that'll, I wonder if that'll be a Netflix like straight, oh, probably, straight to VHS. Partnering... Did you say to VHS? Yeah. You remember those, those straight to VHS movies? You know, like, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Aladdin. I, I mean, I do. I'm like, I Aladdin meant, like 4. they were going to make this for VHS. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's well. It's it's. Let me it's, whip out my Pokemon VHS player. It's <laughs> it's straight to it's straight to Netflix now. Not not no longer straight to VHS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and they do a lot of stuff with Netflix too, so I could see that. Yeah. No, yeah. but yeah, that was my trip. That was fun. That was exciting. Those finds are still out there, guys. You just gotta hunt for them in the desert. And hopefully, the ones you find are not priced at two hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, well. That's the thing. I, we're, I don't think we're past that point now where people know what they or like don't know what they have. Um, yeah, I'm always skeptical to like when somebody's like, like, did you ever see that video where the person's like, I found all my old base set. And it was like 100 Charizards and like 200 Raichus. And like, there's just like no way you didn't know you had that stuff because like there's no way you could forget amassing that quantity of stuff. Right. And right. so like. And, like, what made you pull it out at, like, peak popularity time? Like, I don't know. I just, like, don't buy into any of that anymore. Like, I'm very skeptical. And I would love to, be like, believe that people are out there just, like, finding these treasure troves. And I'm sure it does happen. But usually when that kind of thing happens now, like, there's, like, a really well-documented story that, like, explains it. Like, there was a year that uh, in Ohio, I think it was, somebody went to, like, an estate sale. And they had, like, m those milk crates with sealed video games. And somebody found a sealed stadium events, which was just like insane, like yeah. insane that it was even like out there on like unfound. And it was I mean, the articles, the story, the documentate, like there was so much behind it to like justify why it like was legitimate. And so to me, it, you know, or like, did you ever hear about those the lucky seven or whatever that PSA graded the like baseball cards that somebody found like. Like Seven. just having one of them was like a multi-million dollar, like insane find. And somebody like went up in like, I think it was like their grandfather passed away. I probably have the details wrong, but like they went into the attic, they were cleaning up and they found like an old like paper sack that just like had cards at the bottom. And at the bottom, there were like seven of these or something. Yeah. Seven and they Mickey had to say grade them and they did like a whole article series on them and like broke it down like. And like that kind of thing. Like, I feel like those are the like when you hear about like major finds like this that's like the quality of stories like anytime it's just like some random youtube video it's like you guys are never gonna believe what i found i just don't i don't buy into that I mean, th th the thing is like this find the one that that i went out to like evaluate and and 
do mm-hmm. all this this emission stuff on very well could have been a a small short doc documentary or docu series or something well, on that, this, that's what right? you guys did though you made content and stuff yeah but it, you know we kind of missed the whole beginning part of it and interviewing like the family and all that stuff we just got the aftermath of it so yeah it's really and the thing is i mean i'm pretty desensitized now to pokemon mm-hmm. like this was all the set cards and everything which was cool i mean they, they did the promos and some japanese things as well um although it's a cool story to most like <laughs> i mean like alex when he was taking videos was just like his mind was just blown he didn't know what to do yeah and like i've seen this before you know i deal with this i've dealt with this a lot so like it was cool like it was awesome especially the story of like a grandma doing it <laughs> and like not a kid right? yeah, collecting it and right yeah but like i i maybe you know I, I think it would still be a great headline a great little documentary to, to to find that but for me like a find like that to be a huge story headliner would have to like include a trophy pikachu or an illustrator or yeah, something. like something crazy something yeah like well really- and even this being like a big find right by the time the average consumer learns about it and sees the stuff up for sale, there's going to be that content that you guys made. There's going to be the documentation, the story. Like, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, anytime yeah. at this point, like, something like this comes up where it's went from unheard of to heard of, there's usually, like, that backing. If it doesn't have, like, that backing or, like, I just, like, it's just hard for me to buy into it. <laughs> right. Like, I would love, yeah, I would have loved to, like, been able to do this. The thing is, I got reached out by the person, like, middlemanning this set, and I just didn't believe him. <laughs> like it was here's a million dollar set found in the middle of nowhere are you interested it's like okay first of all i don't have that much money second of all i don't believe you <laughs> so i didn't yeah, i didn't like, i didn't even entertain it i didn't entertain it i think i said thank you for reaching out i just like not interested and yeah. but like if i had that type of money and saw that thing firsthand i would have totally like kept it under wraps tr- try to do a film some sort of short docu-series out of it. Um, Cause yeah, it's really interesting to, to see. I mean, just the way that it was laid out too was really unique, but um, yeah, I wonder if well, we'll I'm ever excited. get that. Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever I'm get excited that. excited to see when, like, will the content, are you guys just going to post it like as everything's done and all that or. Yeah. I mean, we'll wait up until we're closer to the point where we can start doing the auctions. Um, and yeah. Market so it. yeah. Yeah. So you'll see see tiktoks you'll see youtube videos you'll see other stuff but um cool i'll put together a little vlog of just like my trip with like a little david dobrik type four minute five minute vlog hopefully i'll I'll get around to it eventually um (laughs) and put it uh, on your calendars everyone 2023 (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah it was fun man it was a good trip well you didn't miss much pokemon's been kind of Stagged. I think all we've had in the last week, Shining Fates release came out on Friday, yeah. and a lot of places can't even get that because the Midwest has just been in a snowstorm. So distributors have been shut down. FedEx and UPS aren't delivering. I ju- I had a package FedEx overnight from Maine to me, and it took six days to get to me. That's where Shining Fates comes from, Maine. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was something different. Yeah. But like my point is like FedEx yeah. isn't even moving. That's usually who distributors use as carriers. They don't use like USPS because it's like right. the boxes are too huge. They send pallets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um and That's so a lot wild. of the like FedEx wasn't even operating for like three days. And so they weren't even doing pickups or anything. So right now it's just everyone's playing catch up. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping my stuff will ship on Monday to a r- land like Tuesday or Wednesday so I can get it out, you know, to customers. But everybody's been super understanding. I mean, I think at this point, like people are just like, please, like, just don't cancel my order kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the uh, the supply shortages are still going on everywhere mm-hmm. seems to be sold out. But we are seeing ETB prices start to roll back a little bit there it looks like the market's down to like 125 now they were floating like 150 175 which is kind of the opposite of what i expected right i figured release date would come all the stuff would be sold out everyone would be freaking out and so then that would drive the price up but we're actually seeing the prices pull back some and so i i kind of feel like that's maybe the dim like a lot of the market movement right now is just like people buying to sell to other people mm-hmm. and not people buying because they want to open it and maybe since those things aren't moving people are just like trying to cash out as fast as possible which is like slowly pulling that price down some so i think that'll be interesting to watch because if 
we see ETBs and stuff like that keep pulling back even before another wave, I think that'll be a great indicator that this is definitely like going to go like Champions Path esque mm -hmm. and just really pull back once like wave two, three, four comes in, and especially because battle styles will probably be out by then as well. Interesting. So wait, you don't have any Shining Fates at all yet? I have not received it in hand, no. Wow. I know what my allocation number is. I, I, I've been charged for it. It's just yeah. like, we, like they are not picking it up right now, so we can't ship it out. Like Our warehouse has it packed, ready to rumble. They just like, we need the carriers to start going again. So it looks like they're starting to pick up again. So I'm hoping that Monday they'll, they'll grab it and then I'll have everything, labels and boxes and everything ready here where I just open and put in and get it rolling out to customers to get mm -hmm. it to them, you know, ASAP. So cool. Yeah. Cause yeah, I just got mine. A friend broke boxes for me and just sent me packs. So I got those in today. Yeah. I think I'm just going to rip them all just for fun. Um, really? How many packs do you get? Three booster box worth. So 108. 108. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Pull rates look great. Like, from what I've seen, the pull rates are, are better than Hidden Fates. I've seen now, a lot of Charizards. Small sample size, because we're not seeing as many openings on release as what we normally would, because people are struggling to get product in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it looks like pull rates are pretty good it looks like like baby shinies are like one in three or one in four ish mm. um the big v's are like one in ten i or big v's are like one in ten big v maxes are like i think it was like one in 270 something on average like for any one given one right so then you oh, break that down so across very how similar many, to so hidden. Like one in 36 or something yeah yeah very similar to hidden fates but hidden fates was actually higher i think it's like one in 360 so it's well that's like a considerable percentage lower hidden fates bigger of a set it was okay. so that's the big issue is that um the shiny vault the, the person i saw doing the rates like really split everything up so like i wouldn't have probably split the big v's from the big v maxes or like the gold cards i would have just done like those as like an ultra rare subset to kind of figure it out but um but yeah i think i think part of it is that like in japan some of those cards we are getting in like tins and collection boxes and things like that, like Boltund and Eldegoss and all of those that were in their set, we're getting in tins and like as guaranteed. So that really reduces the amount in the set the as cards. well. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be like a situation where, well, I don't know if I call them that. Those are all playable. <laughs> okay. So I think that's why they wanted to make them more accessible is yeah. because they have competitive value. But I think it's going to be a situation where we see like, even if the pull rates are harder, it still seems like they're easier because you're going to see the same ones over and over and over mm. again. Okay. Yeah. I th what was, did you see what the pull rate was in the gold cards? Cause I feel like those are going to be the stonkers. I feel like it was like one. In, don't quote me on this, but if I remember, I feel like it was like one in 30 or something like that. Like, I don't think it like, cause we're already seeing them pull back. I saw that Eternus V max is like 68 bucks, which makes sense because it has competitive value. But Eternatus V was already down to like 30, 32. Hmm. And I mean, we're two days into release by the time this goes up. One yeah. day when I'm actually talking about it. So yeah, I think the gold cards in his face were like one in 100 or something like that. Um, yeah, but there were more of them. So like once you factor out, you mm -hmm. know, I think the difference is these ones are probably more desired. I don't think the stadiums really took off like people thought they were going to. And they got like announced in Japan. People like freaked out like, oh, my God, full art stadiums. But then once we actually I like got them. them, I I don't think people cared as much. It's like it's pretty much like competitive value or that's it. Mm -hmm. And I like them personally. Me too. I think it's something that like down the road people could look at and like have like an appreciation for. But I don't think sure. right now. And I think that's why they quit <laughs> doing them. But because we saw a few more in like Cosmic Eclipse and things like that, but then they pretty much cut them out after that. Um, They're like, but yeah, lands. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I okay. think I think Eternatus and Eternatus V Max specifically being kind of like the legendaries of the Sword and Shield block were like really good ones to pick for this set. But that's the other thing in Japan. They had the two dogs as well as gold cards. Mm. And here we, we got, got those in that premium collection thing. So they're not even in the set as well. So I think that's kind of what hurts shining fates is that what made that set so exciting in japan and so vast a lot of it really got divvied up among just these different product releases and stuff and then we didn't even get marnie either which was you know probably the biggest card in japan i would argue that or charizard 
and then you know charizard v shiny we already got in champions path so like the set really just kind of got butchered up and so yeah it'll be interesting to watch how it plays out long term but i i could see it getting stale faster than what hidden fates did because of that because i feel like people are going to start to see the same cards at a much higher frequency at which point they'll feel like they've experienced the set quicker and i think we're really starting to realize that the people really involved in this hobby are the old timers <laughs> the gen one gen two people yeah. and i mean hidden fates which is perfect for those, mm -hmm. for me for those people um so and there's some of the throwbacks right lapras coughing things like that it's just not know, as many in quantity and they're not but like there's better i mean this is my opinion there's so many better pokemon that could have picked i love lapras but like ditto come on i know Which, people love ditto but come on i can see them trying to hit home though like doing a lot of sword and shield pokemon because it's their new game right and they're right, trying to cater course. to like the new audience coming in whether that be adults or kids but, you know, there's going to be a wave of of kids that they're nostalgic about the Sword and Shield generation. You know, their first game they ever played was on a Switch, that kind of thing. You know, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee brought in a lot of new people is probably on that younger side. And so their first like full mainline game like experience was Sword and Shield. So for them, this is probably like a great product. And so it, this also means this could be like a really underappreciated set out the gate because mm -hmm. people get sick of it early and then down the line it becomes you know the call of legends of this era where people have like a huge fondness for it but hated it when it was out yeah yeah and i just think at this point everyone's gonna chase the full shiny vault sets and mm -hmm. i'm sure they'll continue it because shiny pokemon is just a fun fun little thing. i mean it sells for i if they stopped after that, I think that would be mind boggling, right? Yeah. Like you, you clearly have a recipe that works and people really like it. It's also a way that you can just take cards you've already made and not have to make more cards and they sell well. Like, I don't know why you would stop, especially when, I mean, I'm sure if you did like a gen two set or a gen three set or like combine them, that would just implode. Like, could you imagine shine, like, shiny umbreon shiny espion but in like baby form instead of like the gx's like they did and then or amazing if you took, rare like, lugia amazing rare ho -Oh. cyndaquil like put like mm. cyndaquil the shiny like chikorita totodot like th there's a lot and like everyone's speculating that the last set of the year is going to be like a neo throwback right like what if they did like a mix like it's a neo throwback but instead of like like how in evolutions when they did that throwback they put like mega pidget mega venusaur mega i, I always call it pidget everyone pidget. hates me for pidget yeah i know yeah whatever <laughs> anyways but when they do this throwback that what if they put like shinies in there as well and kind of like mm. mixed it up and did both and that would be a way that they could then incorporate like shining gyarados shining magikarp like well it is pigeon not pigeon so like the real animal the real bird pigeon it's, pigeon. A, it's a pigeon not a pigeon pigeot pigeot I kind Sorry, of... are you saying I'm, i could be correct or yeah. incorrect no i'm saying you could be correct now that i'm really oh. thinking about that and <laughs> he didn't hear a thing i just said about the neo set he's still thinking about how i pronounce pigeon no but right. uh, no i think oh, that would be lost raiders attention for the day so. <laughs> i think yeah that would just i don't know how they would would bring in the shinies to a, a, a full set and maybe that's like wishful thinking right i'm just like theorizing all the different things they can do but yeah. i and maybe they wouldn't do it in the same year but i just don't think there's any way they give up this structure yeah. moving forward like i can't imagine this is the last set we'll ever have like baby shinies and big shinies because it's just yeah. far too successful yeah and like i mean again like i've i've been pitching the idea of a neo 2 evolution since like xy came out xy evolutions and i want it so bad but i am just so overwhelmed now i just feel like if it does come out my head's gonna explode like <laughs> i want it also, but i don't i don't want it anymore i want there's it. gotta be this fear yeah that like can it ever live up to people's expectations at this point yeah and we talked about that in yeah. episode like 13 um i just threw that out you randomly. just picked a random number <laughs> what if that was right though? yeah but yeah we talked about it like can it live up to expectations and I, I don't know the answer to that so but i do know that i can't maybe they stop doing baby shinies but i don't i don't think it happens like yeah. it, also, it's just like cool to get like a textured card, like one in three or four packs. I just think that's really neat. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that's like what makes you feel good about opening which makes you want to keep opening and that's what's going to keep kids interested too because they can rip open a pack they don't have to hit that biggest card but maybe they just like hit that pokemon they like like clavo puss is my favorite card in the set i think i made that very clear to people <laughs> except and, like, you can't spell a... it i figured it out it's two b's <laughs> everything else is single letter yes but yeah I, and like that's a card that'll end up being probably like two three dollars but you know what? If I was like a kid and I re- well, even not as a kid, if I just like open that card, I'm going to feel good about that pack no matter what. And so I think just as a structural inclusion in a set, I think it's like really healthy for the game. And I hope they continue it moving forward. Yeah, me too. How many of those are going to buy? Like 100, 200, 300? No, God, no. I'll probably like 10. Thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Thousand. <laughs> yeah, well, now yeah. I, I really want to go get those packs now and start ripping them. Start ripping them, yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. But yeah, that's about it. Like you said, there's not much going on that I missed out. I guess. Um, Pokemon. I, I think Pokemon Day is when news will start to pick up. Things will yeah. start to pick up. We'll have a lot to talk about because not only will we have PWCC, Logan Paul break, Pokemon's concert, but we'll. I'm sure they will do announcements and things kind of the whole day. Yeah. So, which I think I am going to stream the PWCC again. I kind of want to go back on Twitch and do it. I just. Twitch just really sounds cool. I don't know. Probably not. Though. Interesting. You had a lot of success with YouTube. I don't know, man. Yeah, I you're like right. Doing it on YouTube. Yeah. All right. You, sorry, Twitch. You snooze, you lose. Um, you know, the one thing, the one reason I think Pokemon Day, we're going to hear a lot of like Pokemon news, especially on the video game side, is because Nintendo just did a Nintendo Direct for like 50 oh, some minutes really? and announced, you know, new Smash Bros character, Mario Golf, all these third party titles did not say anything about pokemon nothing pokemon snap no next line pokemon game i mean they just completely avoided pokemon altogether which means i could see us hearing about like pokemon unite i could see us hearing about you know new snap other things like on pokemon day so that's Mm -hmm. what i'm really looking forward to if we don't hear it then i don't think we will hear anything before probably like e3 time which i assume everything will be digital this year but around that time this you know, summer. Yeah, I think Pokemon's just being cautious because they know how yeah. much power there is behind. Yeah, talking behind about every it single thing they say. Yeah. yeah, which, yeah, it's crazy. But I'm excited. Well, That'll before be we go, do you have blips today? Because I brought some blips. Yeah, we've been we've been holding out on you guys, not doing blips and blips for a while, and yeah. this is my favorite part of the show. Um, yeah, I like blips and blips. Uh, I like. We might just have to do blips and blips. Um, on its own one day, just a two minute video. <laughs> just two minute video. Okay, let's try. Uh, but well, what uh, do you got? Give me your. I'll start. Uh, we didn't really talk about this today, but um, after the EV set comes out, I think Evolution cards will be bought out throughout like all generations cards. Sets. Okay. I think Shining Fates pull rates are too high. Uh, Clubhouse will rise and fall in a blip. You know. the, the app, the Clubhouse. No, I know, but what do you mean by in a blip? It'll just... Like like quickly? Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 I get it. Like a blip, on, okay, yeah, yeah, I got it. Cats are better than dogs. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Ojo Magazine will make a comeback. <laughs> because we're doing stretch ones so here's my stretch one pokemon diamond and pearl remakes will get announced on pokemon day fantastic well what are we doing i don't know that's our show let us know which blip and or blep you want to hear more about and we might talk about it um there you go i think we'll have uh menace Back on the show. Edison, back on the show Wednesday. Uh, yep. That's the plan, at least. Um, yeah. So we'll see. How you guys like Edison. We like Edison. So why not have more Edison? Yeah. More Edison for all of us. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the show, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Like, subscribe, follow Squeaks on YouTube and Instagram. And get him. TikTok now. You know, TikTok. I only have one post. <laughs> yeah. Get him, get him blown up on TikTok. I want to see his numbers grow. So uh, Dang. That would be nice yeah. for people to do that. <laughs> uh, Anyone who wants to follow my poor lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
it'll it'll get there you'll it'll be bigger than you can ever imagine dang i hope you're a lot more optimistic than me but that's all the time we've got today folks so again from pokemon radar and squeaks thank you so much for watching episode 18 of collectible conversations and we will see you all next time